This video is sponsored by the design mechanism, the makers of Mithras. Mithras is a registered trademark of the Design Mechanism Inc. used with permission, all rights reserved. In this video I will be looking at how to use opposed roles in the role playing game which is Mithras. My name's Inwills and welcome to the In Crowd. So this is a bit of a change. It's going to be an amalgamation of both the rules videos and the actual play videos. Now I asked for comments about my actual play videos and thank you to everyone who contributed and provided me with feedback. And I've taken all that on board. And yes, the overall outcome was to be shorter and focusing more on the rules. So thanks for tuning in today and I'll see you all later. No, not that short. So what I've decided to do is take an example of the rules and talk about that with you in these videos, but give you some examples from our actual play content. Now, don't worry if you are a avid watcher of our actual plays, then don't worry. You can still catch up with them by going across to my website inworlds.co.uk and you can find the, the latest session on there. And remember, please consider either liking, commenting or subscribing to this channel. Doing so not only supports my content here, but also contributes to me achieving my dream. And I would like to ask you a question of the video. Would you allow a player to roll an influence check on another character or another player? Why am I asking this? Well, stay tuned to find out the answer, but if you have any answers, then please put them in the comments below. So without further ado, let's get into the nitty gritty. Here is how to play opposed roles in the Mithras system. So what are opposed skill roles? Well, first of all, if you would like some more information about how skills actually work in Mithras, then please do check out my video about um, how to use skills. If you already know that, then let's plow on. So Mithras dis define skill roles, opposed skill roles on page 50 of the core rule book. And they define it as um, skills that are pitted against each other. For example, trying to stealth past the observant guard or trying to tell whether someone is telling the truth or not. So when two skills are working against each other, then an opposed role is required. And the result of that will tell the DM or GM and the players who succeeds, who fails, or whether or not there's a stalemate um, between the two skills. Now, which skill oppose each other. Well, if you want to have some examples, you can go to the bottom of page 51 in the core rule book. And these give you, um, there are some examples given there. So for example, insight is opposed by deceit and influence is opposed by willpower. And commerce can be um, opposed by either another commerce or maybe influence. And you can see that that would relate to haggling or bartering. Now, I tend to be quite flexible with um, which skill opposes which. And I actually uh, require the players to justify which ones they will be using. So let's have a quick example. Here's Bartleby in the recent actual play session, buttering up a bandit, which the party has recently captured. Uh, not to bandage him, um, but to heal him. Um, I've, got, uh, I've got a plan that's basically two actions um, and they're kind of working together. I want to okay. use... Uh, a spell to heal, and I also want to try and build rapport with with the the thug by using either streetwise or influence. Okay, and what what do you what's the, your aim for that? Um, I, I was thinking that I want to kind of establish um, a communicating relationship. Uh, you, if it's streetwise, I was thinking like uh, t talking how how a thug might talk and trying to relate to him, get him to open up to me. I wanted to get information like uh, how many other bandits are at the place. 
Okay um, then. So you yeah. can um, you can roll um, either. Well, you you could probably roll your influence, but augment it with your streetwise. So just for people who are watching the channel, um, characters have the option to augment. Uh, a primary skill with a secondary skill. So, for example, in this in this situation, Baltaby is influencing, trying to gain that rapport. But because he has some skills about um, the um, uh, from the streets um, via his um, his um, street wise skill. Um, he's allowed to add 20% onto that role. So it gives them, them a better chance um, to actually um, perform that. So yeah, so add your 20%. Don't forget to put it onto temporary because it uh, affects all the roles. So just anybody who's watching, remember that if the, the role needs to be less than the, the target um, number to succeed, um, a, a role of anywhere between one and five always succeeds no matter what. And a role of 99 and 100 always fumbles uh, no matter what. So yeah. So what's your augmented? Your normal skill is... Uh, uh, it should be 49. This is augmented with 10. So you might have noticed there that Bartleby asked to augment his skill role with his streetwise skills. Now, more about augmenting skills in a different va a video. But basically, this is when um, a player can use a secondary skill um, to support their primary skill. And this secondary skill is said to be augmented the primary skill. And the player is allowed to you to add double the critical value of that skill or 20% to their actual primary skill that they're using. So Baltaby was allowed to add 20% um, of his streetwise skill to his influence role because as a GM, I judge that this would be appropriate. Now for an opposed role to succeed, you compare the different level of successes of the roles. Now these level of successes are fumble, fail, standard and critical. So if someone um, scores a critical level of success, then they would be successful over a fumble, fail or standard. Now, if both players or both roles are of the same level, i.e. they're both standard or they're both critical, then the player or the role with the highest score still within that boundary would be the winner. So let's see how Baltaby does. One. So in this situation, influence was being used by Bartaby and it would be opposed by the bandit's willpower. Now, I could have used influence itself, but it seemed more appropriate that willpower should be used. And by the way, if you're looking at our dice rolls on one, roll 20, if my rolls are in blue, then the players can see them. If they're in yellow, then although we can see them on the video, players in roll 20 will not be able to see them. So let's have a look at how the dice were rolled and what the outcome was. Yeah, with a 58, um, just manages it. So you probably, I'm just going to, um, you sort of like take up your position crouched down by this um, guy. What sort of things are you saying to him? Sorry about my crazy friends, you know. My plans go awry, things go crazy. But I'm not going to hurt you, though. Let me just uh, fix up some of your wounds here and make sure we don't have to do anything rash. Yeah. Um, so, it, yeah, so it, it's almost like um, that that moment when you're trying to befriend a prisoner or something, isn't it? To, to sort of like, you know, bad cop and good cop. So Hengis is obviously the bad cop at the moment and Bartleby, <laughs> you're doing your, your, your nicely, nicely uh, thing. Yeah, so uh, it, you're sort of like building up some kind of rapport with him. Uh, what, what would you like to, um, um, how would you like to steer the conversation? Um, I'd like to steer it towards uh, his his employer, um, kind of framing it like you know things go awry with these guys, you know. Uh, steer it towards any information I can get him to share about the the base, how many people are there, Goat Lady, um, which I think uh, more appropriately she worships Tabris. I think that's what I've written down. Uh, I, I want to know information about the boss, especially um, anything that he's willing to share. Yeah, you, you don't actually know who she worships. I think what you put um, together there was the goat. 
yeah, it was a, yeah. It was a wild guess because <laughs> yeah. I visited the shrine in town, and it was that's awesome. right. Yeah, so it's, so um, he's still able to have a, a, another action, or yeah, by all means. Yeah. So um, and when um when Bartaby um starts, hang up. Sorry, thing. can I just have Bartaby's spell casting? Oh yes, because um, I, I think you are going to heal. So for people watching, um, spell casting, you roll a dice. So for um a thesis it's a, sp a spell skill called exhort and they have magic points so each spell is fueled by magic points that actually recuperate um after uh, an overnight sleep yeah so yeah so roll your exhort you could probably take minutes um over this so it'll be an easy roll I was going to use actually just a simple prayer to stop the, the bleeding on, on like a, okay, a wound because yeah. I didn't think he was doing too bad. So I'm not going to exhort a miracle. Just you to, just, just go to folk magic. Yeah. It. yeah. Got you. Yeah. And I'll use a point of luck to, <laughs> well, no, to it's, show it, off. It's a, I, yeah. I mean, it's an easy roll. So you, you've you succeeded because you can take minutes right. over it. So it's, it's absolutely fine. So you can actually quickly um, do this and you heal the wound. And as this is going on, Gulliver, and you can hear Bartleby talk. So I hope that you gave you some action. context of the opposed role. But let's have another go. And you might want to pause the video and have a think yourself before you see the actual play um, happening. So later on in this session, Gulliver, the Order of the Blue Kraken Sorcerer, t decides to teleport Hazra into a room through a barred window so he can make sure he can open the door from the inside. Now, Hazra doesn't like magic at all and actually has a negative passion against it. Um, more about passions later on. Of course, because of this, he is resisting the, the spell being cast on him. So let's see what happens. It would be quicker just to kick the door in. It would be, I totally agree, and it would probably make the same amount of noise. But actually, yes, it would make too much noise. The The, the plan is that they're not going to give a key to every guard, so chances are that the key's still going to be on the on the inside of the door or even or even on a peg next to it. So so what we'll do is we'll, we'll go back to the first one and I'll, I'll, I'll teleport, um, I'll, I'll teleport, teleport Hasra in and he can open the door. And then once that's done, I'll cancel the spell and he'll come back out. We'll do that. And Gulliver will go and open the um, the, the shutters for the, the first one. Mm. I do not like this. So what, what um, spell are you um, casting? I want to do the. Um, I want to do teleport. And okay, I'm, cool. I'm... You can you can visibly see Hasra shaking. Yeah, um, it, it has a resist roll, I think. Mm, willpower, isn't it? No, I think it's if it's teleportation. Oh. I think it's. I know. I'll, um, I'll tell you in a second. Uh, this isn't the. This isn't it coming off. This is just just to give you the. Um, yeah, it's evade. evade. Yeah. Um, Hengist will say to whisper to Hazra and say, <laughs> um, it "Doesn't matter. Um, hang on. Um, the, it's safe hang anyway. On. No, because you you need to wait because you have. Oh, a, sorry. You have a passion of negative effects of spells. I do believe. So yeah. so that will actually augment your role. So, so Hengist, it, yeah, it's Heng Hengist will say to to whisper to Hazra and say. Hang on, let's move you over there. If you'd rather, I'm happy to go in your place. That's the actual um, spell. So it's going to cost me two magic points and it's going to take um, two turns to... Okay, so, yeah. So um, so two turns is only like... Um, 12 seconds. Well, it turns, it's not. No, sorry, yeah. It, it's less than that. It's a second seconds. But um, roll your um, invocation spell to see. Um, just let it um, set it off first. Yeah. <laughs> um, so nice. So you need to roll your evade, and you need to augment it with your it passion. With passion. Yeah. So with my twenty percent of that, that's not a huge amount. That's seven. Seven. Now you um, have to sorry, actually um, get evade. You actually have to get a critical 
um, to match the, the power of the spell. If you did get a critical, which you don't, but if you did get a critical, then it would have to be any... Well, unless it would you got... automatically be, it would, it would be better than... If you got a critical, you would have resisted it. Yeah. You, you can actually yeah. see it having a tear rolling down her side. Yeah, and we, we've... Um, so, Gulliver, t- tell us what happens at that point. So, so, so basically, um, with with one hand on um, Hazra's shoulder, he, he has the other hand out, and um, as he's holding it out, a small ball of water starts to form, and it's spinning as it's as it's going, and it gets larger and larger until it's probably the size of like a, a baseball, and then Gulliver closes his hand, and at the same time as he closes his hand of bit of floor visible inside the um in the storeroom almost like gets a shimmer like the like there was a puddle forming and at the same time has uh, disappears and appears where the um where the puddle yes was formed. although See, his feet aren't wet it's not mm. it looks like water but it's not so you sort of like teleport um has uh, into the room uh, you can see where he's going, so, so that's absolutely fine. Uh, and then you sustain that spell to to mm-hmm. keep him um, within the villa. So, Hazra, what what's your plan? You're in a room that well, has as you say, is appeared is 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 wearing things. And no, 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 no. And 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 slowly, as he's doing, you can see, he's, he's trying to gain control of himself, and he's is 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 looking. You can see through the bars. Like Gulliver, and he's shaking his head. So, yes, Hazra got teleported in after much sweating and beads of perspiration appearing on his brow. So you can see that um, opposed roles are used quite frequently throughout the session. And one thing I got confused with really early on with my GMing of Mithras is that they are talking about levels of success and not difficulty grades. The latter difficulty grades can, of course, be used, but the difficulty grade is how hard the skill will be. So in ca- in this case, the standard would be the score of a hard difficulty um, row on the table. For example, if I give you an example, it would become apparent. If Bartleby was trying to influence the bandit and Hengis was standing threateningly over the bandit, then the difficulty grade for the bandit's willpower roll would have been hard rather than standard. But he would have to have rolled that... Um, that hard level to get a standard success so you can see that he has more chance of failing and because of this Bartleby has more chances of succeeding so remember my question right there at the beginning um, of the video what happens if a player uses influence say on another player well in this next session you'll notice that Gully actually does that see what you think Gulliver's going to um, look over to Hazra and he's going to say, Hazra, may- maybe you and your new friend should go a bit further down the road and and wait there. Mm, okay. And my... I, want to use, um, I want to use influence on him. Okay, then. So you will need to roll your willpower. I think that's... Is that... Um, opposed by willpower. Yeah. Yeah. So you roll your influence first. Um, I'll use poor luck. Okay, so that'll be um, 37. So that's, uh, yeah, um, go for it, Hasra. Use your willpower. That should be a standard skill. Yeah, and it's up to you to make the um, decision. Um, Hasra's a little bit confused, but... Knowing Gulliver as an intelligent person and, and dealt with him over the years, over the years, over the months, um, he, he's going to... It is a post, possibly... isn't it, the, the willpower and influence role? Oh, oh yes. Yeah, but... Um, so, oh, I see what you mean. Um, you're saying... Because oh. you got 37 and he got 15. Yeah. So, yeah, so if you want to start commanding him... Um, to do well, that, things. That's all Gulliver said. He's just said that that you know his his bit. 
was yeah okay then so what what that means is that um as gulliver has pointed out with the skill roles if they're both the same the the person with the the highest role um uh, actually wins so the 37 would cap the um 15 uh which means that hasra you um sort of like um decide that yeah what gulliver is saying is probably a good idea and sort of yep. like um get the um so I'll, I'll point my scimitar at the the guard on the floor the, the bandit on the floor say you come with me yeah and whether he does or not is yeah do i use have to use my influence to make him follow me um no well you've got a sword <laughs> he, he wouldn't sit down with the sword <laughs> Now, the definition of the influence skill via the Mithras Core rulebook states that an influence measures the character's ability to persuade others. It is used in a variety of situations from changing someone's mind through to bribing an official um, guard or a, an official. And it actually does mention in the description, attempted to persuade a close friend to loan their, their horse may be relatively easy. So looking back on the situation, I think I should have played it more as Gulliver trying to convince Hasra to move away rather than um, actually seeing it as a direct order to go down there. But what do you think? Would you have allowed it as a GM? Would you have played it differently? Answers as always in the comments below and I'll try to reply to them as the week progresses. And if you have any other rules that you would like me to cover in these videos, then please do let me know. Now remember, if you are interested in watching the whole actual play, then you can find the link in the section below. Just go or go over to my website at inwills.co.uk. Also, we've been trying out a new podcast version of the adventure. So please go and check out the podcast on iTunes or Buzzsprout. Now, again, the links are below. Now, I have to state at this point that this is a previous campaign adventure that we played through and have finished. So if you, try not to, if you want to enjoy it in its entirety, then try not to zip back and watch those on YouTube. So that's it i hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have then remember liking comment or subscribing will su support this channel and future videos so until next time i'd just like to say to each and every one of you have fun and i'll catch you all later and until then i hope all your opposed roles are successful see you later guys bye